long heralded as America's sports car, the ZR1 is the most powerful production Corvette ever made, foregoing the standard pushrod V8 for one with four cams, 32 valves, and 405 horsepower. The ZR1's LT5 engine is a multinational effort, with engineering assistance supplied by England's Lotus, an assembly carried out by Mercury Marine in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Final assembly of the entire car is performed where Corvettes have long been built, in Bowling Green, Kentucky. The Corvette's structure is unusual, with fiberglass panels that are bonded to a skeletal steel frame. This structure exhibits some flex, which takes away from the feel of precision. But tires, brakes, and suspension geometry are all so good that this is more of a subjective demerit than anything else. The ZR1 six-speed transmission has an extremely tall top gear for relaxed cruising, and cockpit adjustable suspension damping makes those longer journeys more comfortable. Carrying 200 pounds more than a standard Corvette and wearing wider tires, the ZR1 is a little less nimble, but more than makes up for this in sheer power and speed. The ZR1 attained an honest 178 miles per hour in our latest road and track top speed test, which places it a solid third in this group of sports cars. Drag strip launches are uneventful and easily repeatable, making it child's play to get zero to 60 clockings in the five second range all day long. And the big V8's power band is so broad that you seldom have to worry about being in the wrong gear. Chevrolet introduced the Corvette in 1953 as the all-American answer to the very popular British roadsters of that era. Named after a sleek and fast Canadian submarine chaser of World War II, the first Corvette was fitted with a fiberglass body and the Blue Flame pushrod inline six engine. Although the fiberglass body and front engine rear drive configuration have become integral components of the Corvette's design, the body shape, engine, and chassis have seen much change over the last 40 years. In 1990, Chevrolet launched the ZR1 project with a mandate to build a supercar that would compete with Ferrari, Porsche, and other European sports cars. Though the last of the 6,938 ZR1s rolled off the production line on April 28, 1995, the ZR1 remains one of the fastest and most powerful production cars in the world.
You're just crying out for some rehabilitation, aren't you? Well, I do believe I got me my first UFO capture. You better start turning green real fast, Gizmo, or the National Enquirer ain't gonna buy my story. Congratulations. You've just won an all-expenses-paid county vacation. Holy cow, does ever go fast? Lou, well, we'd like to see you making this approach. Okay. We'll start from this side. And you want the standard uh, start from the stop, right? Coming down is when you want me to punch it. That's yeah, we'll do that. Do okay. But I want to do it like a uh, rocket. Wow. Okay. If I got it. Whisk from car show sweetheart to production vehicle in just three years, the Viper has put Chrysler back on the supercar map in bold block lettering. The approach is brute force rather than finesse, as the Viper is really a car built around its engine, a thundering 400 horsepower 8 liter pushrod V10. Pampering its driver is not part of the equation. The Viper has side curtains instead of roll-up windows, a rudimentary fabric top, and just the basic controls and gauges. By far the largest production car engine sold in the U.S. today, the Viper's 8-liter all-aluminum V10 shares the architecture of Chrysler's small block 360 cubic inch V8, but with two more cylinders grafted on. Its exhaust exits through side pipes incorporated into the rocker panels. The Viper's construction follows race car practice with a square section tubular steel frame, tubular double wishbone suspension with coil-over shocks and plastic bodywork. With its short wheelbase and an impressive 450 pound-feet of torque, the Viper can feel twitchy when exiting low-speed corners if you're not smooth on the throttle. But its handling, in general, is fantastic and has the most direct race car-like feel of the bunch, with 0.96G of lateral grip, just a touch of understeer in a steady-state condition, and virtually no body roll. With a 0-60 to 60 time of 4.8 seconds, the Viper's straight-line performance so overpowers the senses that its excellent handling can be overlooked.
Although claimed by some to be Chrysler's first true two-seat sports car, the Viper is based on the history of sports car designs dating back over 40 years. The first of these was the 1952 Chrysler Hemi-powered Cunningham C2R sports racer, which despite its limited production run, has been cited as the grandfather of the Viper. Perhaps the greatest inspiration came from the legendary Shelby Cobra of the 60s, whose success was based on a formula developed by its creator, Carroll Shelby. He took British-built AC roadsters and bolted in massive 289 and 427 cubic inch V8s. In 1991, only two years after starting development, Carroll Shelby drove the Viper as the official pace car of the Indy 500. One year later, the Viper was rolling off the production line and into the eager hands of enthusiasts.